Hello, Akuma fans. This is Charlie with Gossiger with another tip for you on downloading, importing, and preparing an STP file for the Multis or the U machine, preparing it for CAS on an OSP P200 or 300 control. I've d downloaded this particular C6 holder directly from Sandvik's website. They've got the 3D models in STP form and it's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna leave the uh, the website open for a moment just so that I can uh, extract some information from it in just a little bit. But next, I wanna open the uh, STP file in any of the uh, CAM CAD softwares that you may have. This particular one is Space Claim. And here's the holder in its STP form. The first thing we want to pay attention to is the orientation of the tool in regards to the compass rows. The location of the origin is just, it's perfect as it comes from Sandvik. We want the X, Y, and Z to be right at the center of the base of the capto lobe. However, the orientation on this particular tool isn't quite right. If I spin this around, you'll notice Z plus is correct, but the X plus is holding the tool in the down position. And when this particular tool is in its M602 orientation, the tool holder is going to be up. So we have to rotate this thing 180 degrees. Your software will probably differ from mine, but in this particular case, all I need to do is select and move the, uh, move the part. I'm gonna move it about the XYZ origin, and then I'm just gonna rotate it by 180 degrees. And now, if I've done it right, the orientation is correct, as it will be in the M602 position, right after a tool change, for instance. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna save this STP into an STL file. Your software will probably differ, but mine, as I save as, there's two little factors that I want to pay attention to as I'm getting ready to save this as an STL. The first of which is that I want to make sure that I'm saving it in metric form. Once we import this into the machine, it will change, but right now we want to save it out in metric. We also want, if we have an options block, to come into our, uh, our saving options and make sure that this tool is saved as coarse as possible. We want to have as few triangles to bog down the machine as we can. So my resolution, I select coarse. If you have to, you can adjust sliders or do whatever your software requires. Let's make this as coarse as possible. Even if it deforms the, uh, the tool holder ever so slightly, I'm not really worried about it. So now I'm gonna save it as an STL file and now I'm happy. The more complicated the uh, STL is, the more triangles it's going to create and the more likely there is going to be an error in the STL itself. There are several uh, solid models on the Sandvik website that I've encountered this problem and this is one of them. So now I happen to have a software from Akuma called STL Checker which will allow you to investigate interrogate a model and see if you do have an error. In this case, if I were to read the file that I just created, it will show me that it is an invalid, uh, comes up as an invalid STL and shows me all of the errors that have occurred. Hopefully you have a software that has the ability to look at and correct an STL as it comes in. In my case, this software does a wonderful job of it. And I simply highlight excess number of surfaces and all of the, um, all of the errors, delete them. And then I have a button called auto creation, which will then heal all the errors that have been put into place. Once I've done so, I have one, to, one solid model with no errors, everybody's happy, and I can save that one out. If you don't have a software that's capable of interrogating the model, you can try just directly installing it into the machine. The machine will investigate and interrogate the model, and if there are errors, it'll tell you as it comes up. But unfortunately, the machine tool does not have the ability to correct it. So you'll have to take it back out, put it in your solid modeling software and uh, find out where the issues are. 
So now I've got the solid model on a USB chip. It's in good shape and I'm ready to import it into the machine. In order to do so, I need to import it first into the solid modeling software. Those of you with the P200 control, your location of the easy modeling software will be slightly different. Hopefully you know where that is. We can do a, another video at a later date, but unfortunately I don't have a P200 in front of me, so we'll have to do it this way. Uh, we will select the easy modeling software from the vertical action keys and we have all of our different categories of solid models that the machine will store. In this particular case, as you saw, we're importing a holder. Now, one thing I want to specify to you, I've had several customers try to do this uh, with varying results. They want to, in their modeling software, put a stick tool into this holder and import it as a unit. That can be done. It's a little more complicated and we'll attach, we'll uh, uh, do another video at a later date. But this is the easiest way. Just bring it in as a holder and we're gonna let OSP create the stick tool and install it. So the, the reason behind doing it this way, the solid model is being used for collision avoidance. The machine needs to know that the insert is allowed to touch the material, but the holder and the stick itself are not. So that's why we are creating these from the easy modeling software so that the, uh, the OSP has the ability to say, yeah, the insert's capable of touching the, uh, touching the material. So we will now select the holder category, and we want to find the soft key that says read and read file. I'll select the USB chip that I have installed. I guess I need to install it first. You'll also notice that when you first select the USB drive, you will not see your file on there even though you've saved it. That's because the default file extension is OEC, the Akuma file extension, and it'll be creating that for us. But right now we want the STL, so we'll find the soft key that says change file type. Now we're reading STLs there's our holder. By highlighting it and clicking execute we're doing the uh, we're allowing the machine to interrogate the model as I previously spoke of and if it works and there's no problems it tells me no errors have been found and I say okay there's my model and I've got a holder. Now that I've said OK, I can close this window and that holder is now in my library and I never have to import this again, even if I put a different stick tool into it. We're just going to leave that holder in the, uh, in the machine forever. Now that we own it, we might as well have a graphic for it. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to get back into that holder I'm going to edit the holder itself because I need to explain to it where the where the tool is being held. Now right now it is going to try to put the tool back here in the origin. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to turn on my uh, transparency. It'll make life a little easier for me to see this um, uh, see the little compass rose. So when I go into edit And my, uh, my software seems to have malfunctioned right now and I don't have the transparency mode, but that's not a big deal. Basically, it would allow us to see through the part and see that the origin is positioned back here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to change the tool mount method from standard to option. And what this allows me to do is to specify where the tool tip is going to be in relation to the holder itself. That information I can get directly from the Sandvik website. They give you the specific distance from the origin to where the tool itself is going to be. So our WF and our LF in this case. So the LF appears to be just to the face of the part. That'll work for us, 5.118 inches. So in my Z, if I enter that number, now we're starting to see the um, we're starting to see the compass rose sneak out on us a little bit. There is the mounting point of the tool. Now, by putting it right there, we are going to be able to express to the machine where the tip of the insert is, 
specifically from the um, from the face of the flange. Now the next distance that I need is the WF, which is the center line to the top of the tool. And if we look carefully in here, that's 496. But because I'm going to put in a stick tool in this machine, I'm going to change that. I'm going to add an inch to it, 1.496. So now that compass rose is right where the tip of the insert will start. Now these don't have to be exacting numbers. If I wanted to, I could increase the amount of the Z just to make that compass rose right at the face here or the face here depending on which one works better for me. So let's just say I'm going to put in five inches even and that's pretty close to right where it is. Once I've done this it has not changed the origin of the holder. That's important because the machine needs to know where that holder is going to be. Once I've done this I can come into my tool data page for you OSPP 200 people. This is slightly different. I'm sure you know where to go from here and we're going to create a new tool by hitting tool register. P300 guys you have three selections especially if you've got a U machine like mine you have tool register which is standard the M chip tool register that means it's multiple stick tools in a single holder don't use this if you're only using one insert you only have a certain number of these that are allowed to be registered and for the U machine people you also have a turret tool that's for the lower turret but let's just do a standard tool register the tool number is the number that the program is going to use to call up the tool in this case I'm just gonna say we're gonna use 5555 a tool comment if you want this is gonna be let's do a caps lock here this is gonna be a test tool we have to tell the machine what kind of tool it is and the size allows us to dictate whether or not this thing needs to be isolated in the tool chain or if it needs to be slowed down as the tool is moved through the tool change arm. In our case we're just going to call it a standard. And then the basic position, that's the position in which the tool will be touched off. Base A, base B, or 45 vertical. We'll just select base A as being our primary. That's all I need to populate now. The rest of it is going to be automatically filled after I find the holder and tool select. Now that I get my easy option screen, my easy uh, modeling screen, I can select the holder, find the one that I had initially. There it is. Now I'm in transparency mode. It's showing me where the tip of the insert is going to be in relation to this part. Now I can select the tool. I have previously created a CNMG tool in the uh, easy modeling software. Uh, there's another video on my channel that will help you do that. but. We'll select it and say OK. Now you'll notice a couple of things right off the bat. It put the tip of the insert on our compass rose, but it's upside down and it's not protruding properly. So both of these maladies can be fixed with the change setting button. Once I change this to flip over the tool, I want to tell it that I am in reverse. Excellent. And now my projection amount is the amount that the tool is going to stick out from the holder itself or from the compass rose wherever you've oriented that. And two and a half looks a little big so let's go 1.25 and that looks a lot better. <clears throat> now as you can see I made a bit of an error here in where I placed the compass rose. So I'm going to cancel out of everything get all the way back into my easy modeling software and change that holder and its mounting position and just subtract one inch from that. So let's say 0.496 looks like uh, Sandvik knew what they were talking about before I ever did so kudos to them. Now let's get back in we'll repeat what we did register a tool it's a tool register number 5555 it's a test tool it is a turning tool, it is a standard, and its base position is going to be base A. And now let's holder tool select. We'll select the holder, that guy. Our compass rose is now moved, so we'll select the tool. There's our CNMG. It's still backwards, so we'll change settings to in reverse, and we'll stick out our projection amount 
by 2.5. Uh, we decided that was a little far, so let's go 1.5 and call everybody happy. Once I've done that, I want to, if I'm using 3D virtual monitor from Akuma, make sure you turn off this tool edge position select. It will modify your work offset or your tool offset based on what you've put here. If you're not using 3DVM, then you don't need that. But in our case, we do because I am using the 3D virtual monitor. Previously, I talked about the uh, transparency. Now it's showing up on this particular model. It makes life easy for me. I can rotate the part about. And if I turn off my um, transparency, that tool looks exactly like what I expect from the thing. Once I've done this, I can say OK. And now this tool is stored in my library. If I register it now, then it's all set to use. I'm going to do one more thing. This is a pretty standard tool that I will probably want to save as a set tool so that I can use it again in the future with ease. So if I come over to the arrow right key, I have a button for register set tool. And now I can simply say this is my test set tool. And now this assembly will be in my easy modeling software from now on with this orientation. If you are going to be pulling this tool in and out of this holder periodically, it's not advisable to save it as a set tool simply because you cannot change the orientation between the stick tool and the holder if you have um, saved it as a set tool. So now I will say OK. I'll register it and confirm that I want to execute the registration. Now it's there. And to make sure that everything worked fine, I'm going to detach the tool that's in my turret. And I will find my unmounted tool display. And I will turret attach the tool I just created. And if everything was done right, I can go over to my collision avoidance. And there is my, uh, is my tool exactly as I built it. Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can uh, we can take a look at it and make sure that we did everything right. That's key. So there it is. Now it is in my machine and it is providing full crash protection through the collision avoidance software. Uh, I do, when I'm on a physical machine, I like to install the tool into the spindle and make sure that its orientation matches the graphic perfectly because that very first step that I did, if I had forgotten to, it would show this graphic upside down from the physical reality and now I've got nothing but hassle. So I hope this helps you. We'll do another video in a little bit that shows how to create a tool from Sandvik. But right now we've got the holder and we're done. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiker application staff.